So let me know that you can hear me and see me. Sorry, we were a little late having some <clears throat> technical difficulties because of the storm last night. I'll give you guys a chance to hop on, give this video a thumbs up if you guys want more metaphysical manifestation content. Yeah? Okay, I think I'm live. Is it stuck? Okay. Yay! Thank you, thank you. Today what we're talking about is my manifestation secrets. And I'm what I've decided to do is I'm going to take one secret at a time and really deep dive into it with you. Because the thing is that sometimes I see people trying to take someone else's method and copy it exactly. But if they don't know the underlining reason for why that thing works for that other person and not for them, it's not going to work, right? So today, what I want you to tap into is here's the, the, the saying, the affirmation, the mantra, the core belief is I'm open to receive in any and all ways. This is very, 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 very important, especially if you're trying to manifest the way I've manifested, if you want it in all areas of your life, if you don't want to put a ceiling on your miracles, you have to get this core belief correct, okay? I am open to receive in any and all ways. Write this down in the chat for those of you guys that are on live. I am open to receive in any and all ways. Hello, ladies. Hi, 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 everyone. Hello. Okay, so let's break this down. The first part of this is what we're saying, I am open. Okay, what does that mean? I am open. What that means is that you have faith, that you are making a decision to allow yourself to receive that you are expecting yourself to receive, that you are accepting that you are receiving, right? You are open. The first part is I am open. That means there's no doubt. That means there's no duplicity in you. That means you're open. I'm open, okay? The next part is to receive. I am open to receive. That means you're in faith. You don't just have faith in God, you have the faith of God. You are open to receive. Now, the second, the third part is, I would say, the most important part, because this is where we start telling God how to do God's job. This is where we start putting a ceiling on our manifestations. I am open to receive. What's the last part? In any and all ways. I'm open to receive in any and all ways. The typical life cycle of a manifestation, and we're going to do a healing meditation so you guys can like break out of this once and for all. The typical life cycle is you want something, you know, in, uh, you, you have a desire show up, let's say you want it, right? You're like, oh, that would be so nice. Nice. And you focus some energy on it. You think about it. Maybe you visualize it. Maybe you journal about it. You do all the things that you think you should be doing. Okay. And let's say that it manifests or it's about to manifest. And then it's like you start losing faith. I've seen even people manifest the thing and not be able to see it because they started having doubt. They're not open anymore. They're not in their receiving energy, and they are definitely not open to receiving it in any and all ways. So even when you receive it, if you're still not open, you lose appreciation for it. I was with family. You guys know we had our feminine, sacred, and savage intensive. Oh, my God. It was next level for all of us, for my students, for my team, for myself, the co-creation that we had at this event. And we actually ended up using this event as an opportunity to spend some time with, with some, we have family in California. And one of the things I noticed with one of my family members, she's very, very, very wealthy. They, they worked really, really hard. They've gone through hell and back in their life, like really 
deserving people, honest people, loving people. And in the last 30 years, they amassed wealth and success in all areas of their life. And one thing that I, I noticed about her, and I love this about her, I wish more people were, were like that. I'm like that. And sometimes I've even judged myself for being like this. What I noticed with her is that even though they're so wealthy, they have everything. They literally have everything. The smallest, littlest things excite her so much. They make her so happy. You will literally see this woman, this mother, this grandmother, wife, you know, get giddy with excitement over the smallest, littlest things. And I love this about her. I also have other people that I know that they will get everything handed to them, but they don't have the ability to receive that blessing. They're still in like, but there's this wrong with it, or I can't enjoy this because that thing over there. Or it didn't come in the way that I wanted it to come. Or it's not in the right color. But this this relative that I have, oh my God. It, just watching her receive little things that you would think someone of her caliber, it's like, it should be no big deal. It is no big deal in the sense that they, she can easily manifest it. But her appreciation, her container for enjoyment it's next level stuff. I'm so glad and blessed that I got to spend time with her and I get to watch this. And it has also helped me stop judging myself because I was told by a relative, this was on my 21st birthday. I was uh, opening my presents. My mom had thrown me a surprise birthday party. So opening my presents and I was getting really excited about things. I was like, oh my God, I always wanted this. And I wanted this in exactly this color and this thing I love and this I didn't even know I wanted until I received it. Like I was really just happy. And I had an uncle that kind of was like pulling me aside and he's like, don't do that. Why are you getting so excited about little things? It makes it look like you don't have things. It makes it gives too much importance to the giver. And I was like, oh, wait, that's wrong. But I'm so glad that I never let that part of me. I've judged it because of what my uncle said, but I never could turn that off. And thank God, because I'm able to keep myself in a state of receivership in a state of gratitude by tapping into not only the things that I'm currently receiving, but remembering that everything that I currently have was something that I at once wanted and being able to be that giddy little child-like energy of wonder and enjoyment. And I don't think that 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 makes us look like, oh, we're not used to nice things. In fact, it, it makes it look like we are. We are used to nice things because we have the container to receive it. Of course, we are used to nice things. So if you are one of those people that does that and you've been judged for it or you've judged yourself, no, ma'am, that is that is your manifestation superpower. Appreciating every single thing, even the little things, even the details. Even things that you have a closet full of, even things that you normalize because they're easy for you to manifest, don't ever lose that wonder and that excitement for it. But that wasn't the main thing I wanted to talk to you about. Um, there is another kind of, I want to go back to, I'm open to receive in any and all ways. But do you guys want to do the meditation first today? We usually do it at the end. How are you guys feeling? She lives in constant gratitude. Yes. Yes, KB. Yep. I love this about her. Like seeing her excitement once like makes me want to just give her more things. Like just do more little things for her because her joy, her excitement. And said, just tuning in, I'm open to receive in any and all ways. Okay. You guys want to do the meditation first? Yes, because you know the ultimate giver is just as excited to give abundantly. Yes. Okay. All right. I feel like you guys are on the same page as me and you want to, you rather do the meditation first. It's good to like switch it up once in a while. So let's do that. So today's meditation is, I want to title it feeling safe to receive. I had put something else on there, but I feel like that's what's coming up for me now. What I had put initially was there's no price to pay. 
for receiving, but we'll tap into both of that. So I want you to relax. If you have water, please drink a little bit. If you guys come to my live streams, or even if you're watching the re replay, make sure you're well hydrated. Because when we do these meditations and we do these energy healings, if you're not hydrated, if your body is kind of in a state of dehydration, which, you know, we're, if we're drinking coffee or, you know, we forgot to get our water intake for the day or we're not taking our electrolytes, the energy doesn't flow in. Everything is sort of like in a state of dryness. Like really think about this. Like think of the flow and the hydration of the river, of the ocean, of the cosmos. Like look at what it signifies, right? So make sure that you are really hydrating yourself. And now sodas and co coffee and all of that doesn't count because it can actually have the opposite effect. So make sure you're drinking just pure, clean, filtered water. Sometimes I do like to add a little drop of electrolytes or magnesium to it as well. Uh, but right now I'm just drinking plain filtered ice water. So we're going to close your eyes. Uncross any fingers, any legs, uncross everything. Be really open to receive. Posturing is really important. And we're just taking some deep breaths, not forcing anything, just getting into a natural state of relaxation. Becoming aware of our breath. Becoming aware of our body. Allowing ourselves to be in a relaxed state. And just becoming aware of the question, as God is looking on to us, as God is watching, what is our posturing saying right now? Does your forehead look like it's ready to receive? Is it open? Does your breath signal that it is open to receive? Is the way that you are carrying your head on your body right now, the posturing of it, signaling, signaling that you are open to receive? We're just becoming aware without judgment. If it's not, well, could you make it more open to receive in this moment? Instead of maybe being down, maybe you hold it up a little bit with pride, with knowing, with faith that it is open to receive. And I want you to come down to your chest. Is your heart open to receive? Coming down to your womb. Or just your solar plexus if you are a male. What is the posturing there? Are you signaling that you are open to receive? How about your hands? Are they open to receive? What about your feet? Are they pointed straight, excited to take aligned action in any way that God asks? 
Are you truly open to receive in any and all ways? And just opening up our energy, opening up any constrictions in our body, knowing that it is safe to receive. God doesn't have any fine print. There's no price to pay. There's no suffering. You do not have to go through hell to get to heaven. You get to have your blessings, the health, the joy, the abundance, the love, the relationships, spirituality, the dream, career, business, babies, the house, the car, the wardrobe, and it's safe to receive all of this and more. Dear God, we hand over to you any worry, any doubts, any fears, any suffering that we believe will come as a result of our manifestations, of our blessings. We know that you are the ultimate giver, that you are source of all things. And we know that you have the ability to transmute our fears, our worries, our doubts into abundance, into blessings. And as I say this, I'm letting go of anything that blocks my abundance. I'm handing it over to you. I'm making the decision that I get to have faith. I don't just want to have faith in you, God. I want to have your faith. I want to have God's faith. That everything is always working out for me that I'm always divinely protected. And I know that you want me to have it all. You want me to have my soulmate partner. You want me to have a sacred business. You want me to raise blessed, abundant, loving, kind adults. You want me to be in my healthiest and fittest body. You want me to live in my dream house. I know that you want me to drive my dream car, have overflow of abundance in all areas of my life. Just like you have provided for us in the sunlight, in the information downloads, in the oceans, rivers, plants, trees, the moon, everything. You have made this world abundant for us and you also want us to be abundant. And dear God, with this, I am healed of any distortions that have been created in my field through others, through fear, through the wrong grids, And dear God, I only want to remain plugged into your grid, into God's grid. With that, God, please return to sender what is no longer mine, what doesn't belong to me, what was never mine to begin with. Any fear, any doubts, any worry, any anxiety, return to sender. And I call back onto myself energy that I have lost and leaked and let go accidentally that belongs to me. 
my knowing, my faith, my divinity, my sacredness, my savageness, all of it coming back to me. It is now safe to receive in any and all ways. I am now open to receive in any and all ways. There's no price to pay. There's no suffering required. And so it is. Whenever you're ready, open your eyes, ground yourself, look for something with feet, or you can put your own feet on the ground. Ah, sometimes when we go into like the 4D and 5D, if we don't ground ourselves, we can become a little like uh, airy, a little dizzy. So we want to always ground ourselves. You can look at the feet of your table, your chair, your bed, or put your own feet on the ground. Touch something in your physical reality. Super open, Goddess said. Return to sender. Yes. You're so welcome. I feel expanded now. Yay. Love it. Oh, Kitty said my rotation says that about me. It makes them do 100x for me. They love it. Love it. Awesome. So with that expansive energy, now let's talk about today's topic, which is I'm open to receive in any and all ways. So one pattern I've seen, not only in myself, I've definitely done this, but I see this also in my students and my clients, and I see this with people even around me, that can really put a cap and a ceiling on our manifestations, on our blessings. And what this thing is, is telling God exactly how you expect something to be manifested, like which channel you expect God to use. Now, at the surface, this might appear like a good thing. Like you might say, well, what's wrong with that? Like, I'm very particular. I'm very specific. I'm giving like exact directions, right? But I think that there is something wrong with that because the universe Gainath, God, Source, whatever name that you have decided to use for your higher power, that belief in something outside of you, it uses the path of least resistance to get things to you according to your beliefs. So for example, if I believe that the only way I can get money is through my husband, then I'm giving the universe just one portal to get money to me. Is there something wrong with that? Not exactly. Like receiving money through my husband is fun, but I'm actually now capping out all of the other, like collapsing the realities of any other way of receiving money. So if I was meant to inherit money, I'm saying no, money can only come through my husband. If I was meant to have a successful career or business, I'm saying no, no, no. I can only receive money through my husband, right? If I was meant to win the lottery or have like passive income streams that I've generated or receive money from my portfolio, right? Investments. I'm saying, no, I'm only open to receiving money from my husband. Now, there's several pro- things wrong with this. One, I'm, I'm now putting my faith in my husband and saying it, it can only come through that. Nothing wrong with that. However, now I'm also involving another person as my only source. So if my husband has limiting beliefs of how much he can earn from his career or his job, now he's adding another limitation to my entire manifestation. So I'm saying to God, God, all my blessings can only come through my husband. And if my husband is saying, dear God, all my blessings can only come through my job, Now I have this tiny little pinhole of a place where God can give me my blessings. I've like really constricted that portal. Imagine having access to an unlimited ocean of blessings, but showing up with like the tiniest, I'm I'm trying to think of an example here around, but like think of like the tiniest like hair like straw, okay? And you're like, okay, I can only get, 
this ocean blessing through like this straw. Well, the universe is trying to get it to you, but you're the one that like literally showed up with the tiniest, skinniest straw in the universe. And now you're wanting it to be channeled through that. We do this in so many areas of our life. I have been doing this particular inner work for 17 years. And let me tell you, let me tell you how it's worked in my life. When I started this inner work, this law of attraction manifestation 17 years ago, I was like, okay, I want to be open to receiving in any and all ways. And so I did inner work around it. I would find myself saying things like it can only come through this or it can only be like this or I can only earn this because this is my education. And, and then I would say, no, 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 no. I'm open to receive in any and all ways. And then for like six months to a year, blessings would flow through me through like so many different channels. And then I, all of a sudden I would realize, oh my God, in this little tiny area of my life, I'm still saying to the universe, you can only come through this little tiny pinhole. I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I didn't notice it. So I would like do inner work around that, rework my, my beliefs. And the inner work that I did around that was, it, it's in my Lady Balls book. It's, the, it's also in the Basic Babe Bundle. It's the six step process, right? The six step manifestation process. So I would do it around that and I would open up and I would receive even more blessings and even more like joy and even more abundance. Let's say for another six months to a year. And then I would notice another area of my life where I'm like overlooking the fact that I'm constricting it. So sometimes it, we have to do this in our work in a lot of layers. And the reason for this is, is because we're constantly receiving signals from our environment, signals from our family and friends, signals from society that says, no, you can only receive this much because of this job. You can only receive this much from this thing. And it negates our faith. It negates our belief systems because we're introducing doubt. We're introducing duplicity. Where is our faith that... God is the ultimate giver. You think God is limited in how and when he can give to you? Of course not. And what I've seen is the people that are able to do that in our work, and sometimes it's not a once and done, right? Even in my own life, last week I noticed something when I was in LA in Orange County. I'm trying to think what it was where I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I didn't notice in this little particular area of my life, I'm still telling God to do his job in a certain particular way. And I'm like, ah, oh, I know I've done this inner work in like a gazillion areas. How did I miss it in this area? And if I'm doing it in this area, then I'm really capping it in all other areas. And so I let it go. If, I, if it comes to me, it was something minor, but... I don't want anything like that in my field. I don't want anything like that in my grid. I don't care how minor it is. I do not want to be the type of person that tells God how to do God's job. I don't like it when people tell me how I should be doing my job. No one likes that. I do not want to put a cap on God's miracles. I do not want to put a ceiling on God's miracles, on God's blessings. I want to really, really be able to receive them in any and all ways. Now with my own children and with my students and clients, if I notice them doing that, here's a question that I ask them and you can write this down. Someone put it in the chat for us. And you can you can self-coach yourself through this. Coaching is great to receive. I'm always investing in coaching. I have a coach even currently, but I also need to self-coach myself. You need to be able to do both. You want to invest in mentors and coaches that can see things that you're not seeing. But the second part of that is that also be able to coach yourself because you're not going to have a coach 24 seven, you need to be a self coach. So you can use this as a self coaching mechanism like I do. I mean, I need another sip. I honestly feel like I put the wrong straw in here because it's like going in a little, you know what I mean? It's going in a little too low. I think this straw belongs to my other cup. Sorry. <laughs> Side note. Okay. Here's the question that I asked my kids. So let's say that I overhear Alina, Ayan, Arman, or one of my clients saying something like, 
oh, uh, you know, I, this is what I desire, but my, you know, but my teacher said this, or this is what I desire, but my job only pays this, or this is what I desire, but my husband only earns this. Like something along the lines of it has to come through this portal and the society, world, teacher, husband, friend said it can't. The question that I say is, oh, well, is that the only option? That's it. I don't go into lecturing them. I don't go into, hey, that's a limiting, like, I'm just poking a slight hole. Irfan, this is one of Irfan's sayings. We're poking a little hole in their story. So their story is, a story is a limiting belief, right? Their story is that, I desire money, but I can't have it because my job. I desire this cookie, let's say if it's a child, but my mom said no. I desire this partner, but my culture says I can't have that. That's their story, right? And we don't want to bombard them and start lecturing them because gentle, okay? We're just poking it's like a think of it as a bubble a story is like a bubble or it's like a balloon right if we pop it we might like jar them it's like too much for their container we're just like oh well is that the only option or okay is that the only way and what i notice is if i just put that in their field and i back away I see almost this light bulb going off. It's almost like you see their energy literally opening and expanding in front of your eyes. And I've done this to myself. I coach my, I self coach myself this way too. Like if I find myself saying, Oh, uh, I want this, but da, 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 da. I desire this, but blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, but is that the, is that the only way? Are those my only options? Is there more? And now what we're doing is whatever we have perceived as a roadblock to our manifestation or a bottleneck or whatever, right? A cap. We're now opening up our consciousness and, and just playing with, is that the only way? Really? In God's infinite kingdom, that's the only option? Because one thing I've noticed is that we've all been somehow brainwashed to believe that there's always two options and they both kind of suck. Raise your hand. Give this video a thumbs up if you've done this. Put it in the chat where you do this or you have people around you that seem to do this where there's only two options and both of them semi suck. Well, I could do this, but then blah, blah, blah. Or, or I could do this, but then my husband's going to be bad at me or my boss will hate me or I'll be miserable or like, really? In God's infinite kingdom, those are the only two ways and both of them are half-assed miserable? Really? So we're just poking a hole. Irfan invented that, that saying. We're poking a slight hole in their story so that they can start doing the rest of the work. We don't even have to give them the other options. We don't, we might not know all the options that God has available for them. We're just kind of putting that in their field that they're limiting themselves unnecessarily. And it reminds me of that famous Einstein quote that I, I'm, I don't remember it verbatim, but it was something along the lines of, you can't solve a problem from the same level of consciousness that created the problem, something along those lines, right? So what if the two half miserable solutions that you think exist aren't the only ones? What if there's an infinite number of potentials that could manifest your desire and a whole host of them, thousands, millions, trillions of them do not suck in fact, they expand you. In fact, they open you up to even more blessings. Okay, so we all do this. Like I said, I literally caught myself doing this in, in Orange County on our trip. This trip was like, there's life before this trip and after this trip. So much expanded, so much manifested. 
my container was like literally like ripped open and expanded through this trip. And I feel like right now I'm in that like deconstruction, deselection process where a lot of things that no longer match my new higher level frequency is falling away. It's deconstructing because those things are no longer a vibrational match. They are not of God anymore. They are not in resonance with my new field, with my new vibration, with this new level that I'm going at. So when you say I am open to receive in any and all ways, are you really? No judgment, just we're poking a hole in our stories. Enough of a hole that God's light, God's abundance starts flowing in through that hole. You only need that one hole of faith, of questioning your old ways, of questioning your limiting beliefs to let God's light in. That one little pinhole that I just poked by saying, really? Is that the only option? Those are the only two miserable options. Like God wants you to have blessings, but through misery, through sacrifice, through giving something up, really? That's all I said. And all of a sudden your wheels are like, wait a minute, are there any other options? Now you're starting to open yourself up. Luckily, because I've trained my kids because I asked them these kind of questions, they also do the same with me. My husband does that with me. My team does that with me. We need people in our life that share this vocabulary, that share this inner work. And I'm actually, I want to do a live stream for you guys. Maybe that will be the next one where I want to share with you certain things that I want you to gently and lovingly train people around you to understand. Because when I train my children by asking them this, when I'm doing it, when I'm having a very human moment and I'm like, oh, I could do this, but that's miserable. I could do this, but then I'll have to give that up. They're like, really, mom? Are those your only options? I'm like, oh, no, there's more options. I might not know them right now at this exact moment. But the fact that I'm even starting to question my dilemma of like this miserable thing or this miserable thing i'm now opening myself to say wait a minute that can't be it god's infinite kingdom cannot just have these two miserable options there's got to be more there's i know that there is more okay so let me let's do a little bit of a q a check in with you guys and then we'll see whatever else channels through. I, I feel like my best work is channeled through when you guys ask me like really expansive questions. And many of you guys have said that as well. So let's do that right now. Oh, quickly, I also want to mention I'm enrolling for my new course. Um, it's called Sky Not. The, there's two more days left of uh, it's like a secret offer, meaning the rest of it hasn't downloaded yet. So I haven't put it on the sales page. By next week, I'll have more information about this. Like I can feel it coming. So right now the price is like the pre-order, like unknown offer, secret offer. What I do know about it is it's called Kainat. And in my, uh, like my mom's language, my parents' language in Urdu, Kainat means universe, all that is. And it means everything, everywhere, all at once kind of thing, like source, like ultimate source. And that's what's coming through in this course. I also keep seeing the number six. So I think it might be six trainings. I don't, I don't have all the information. You guys know I always get things in bits and pieces. So that's why I have it on a secret offer pricing. Many of you guys have signed up. University Bundle students, listen up. This is bonus in for you guys. So it will be included. So if you are a University Bundle student, don't purchase this it's going to be included for your package. Okay, let me see what you guys are saying. Okay, so Paula, hi, Paula. Happy to see you again. She said, how to let go of the impulse of trying to figure out ways when you're trying to manifest something. Okay, so this is what has helped me. Let me get, let's get like really dropped in for this. I am the how. So I know we try to figure out the how or the ways, but how I see it is I am God's how. So God had a desire. 
to have an experience, a human experience. We fragmented from God's energy and incarnated here to have the universe, God experience three things through us and expand, right? So we're all kind of fragments of God experiencing and expanding the universe through our experiences, through our doing, through our being, through our desires, through our manifestations. So if I'm God's how, if I'm God's way, I can't be sitting here trying to figure out I am the way. I am the way. I am the how, right? So I can decide how I want to do this. Now, how do I define decide? I, I say, what would be the most fun? What would feel really amazing? Now, here's my little like caveat to this. Most fun, most expansive doesn't always mean the most fearless. Okay. It doesn't always mean it's going to be easy right away. A lot of times I'm like, no, not that. I don't know how to do that. Or that's going to be, it's going to require a new skill set. Or I'm scared of that. God, no, not that. But that's what my heart is moving towards. That's what makes like me excited. It makes, it might scare me. Yes, it might scare me, but it also expands me. It's also, I know that God is expanding through me, overcoming that thing, learning that thing. So there is this level of excitement moving towards it, fun, but also like, ah, can I really do this? I'm going to be required to learn new things, be in new ways, take on new identities. But I want you to get rid of, here's the thing, here's the thing that's coming through. Stop thinking that there's only one way and stop thinking that there is a wrong way. You are the way. So whatever you decide is the right way and you start moving towards that and you start taking aligned, inspired action towards that, that's the way. You are the way. Is that really sinking in? I'm going to keep saying it. Some of you guys say to me that you've heard me talk about something a million times, but that millionth and one time I say it in a different way and it sinks in. Even my team says that to me, that I know you've said this a million times, but that one time that you just said it in the live stream, it hit me or it expanded everything else you had said. So I want to keep saying it in new ways, but you are literally the way, okay? Like, for example, when I had the desire 13 years ago to, to seek out community, to make friends, to find people that are like-minded, I decided at first that it was going to be through a blog. I had a whole blog called The Universe Guru before I had this YouTube channel. After a year, someone recommended YouTube. I didn't even know YouTube. I had never heard of YouTube. Okay. I, then I changed to YouTube. Am I saying that the blog was the only way or the right way or the wrong way? No. It was the way that I decided at that time. Then am I saying that YouTube was a better way? It's the only way? It's the wrong way? It's the only option? No. It's the one that came into my field and I decided at that time. God didn't care how I created the community. The desire was just to have a community of like-minded people to discuss things. One of the things that I was dealing with at the time, my mom had just passed away. I was in a new marriage, a new state, right? And I didn't, I had people around me, but they weren't necessarily like-minded. Like we could go out to, I had made some friends. We could go out to lunch and dinner and we could talk about things, we could talk about fashion, we could talk about children and, you know, life, but we couldn't talk about things that I wanted to talk about, metaphysical things, inner work things, law of attraction things, you know? And so I, I, that's what I desired. What do you think God was like, Mina, I want you to create a community, but the only way you can do it is a blog. No, the, I'm, I decide what will be the funnest way. And then I go and I look at the resources that are available to me. You know, 30 years ago, I didn't have the internet available as a resource. It wasn't invented yet. It wasn't in our consciousness yet. It was not a part of my bag of known resources. But 13 years ago, the internet had been invented and it was something uh, that was available to me. Could I have also created a meetup group or 
a church group, a church like group where everyone gets together and talks every Sunday. Sure, those were also available options. Could I have put up flyers and said every Saturday, you know, first month of the Saturday, we get together in my living room and we talk about things? Sure, that was also a resource that was available. I chose one and I decided that that was the right one. For a whole year, I decided that the blog was the right one. Side note, my father-in-law and my, and my mother literally were the only two people reading that blog. <laughs> At least that's what seemed like from the comments that were left by both of them. But it prepared me. It put me in play mode for what was to come next. Now, let's say five years later, there is a whole nother resource available that you and I can't even conceive of right now because it's not in our known reality right now. It's not an option, right? Because we don't, our brain hasn't even conceived of it yet. And then let's say that I move towards that. Are you going to say, well, you're doing it wrong, Mina, because you said your community was on YouTube and now you're moving into this other thing. I, I can't, let, let's say it's like, what are they calling it? Like a multiverse virtual reality kind of world, right? Well, now I have new resources available to me that weren't available a moment ago. And now I'm deciding that that's the way. Do you see how that works? It's not invented yet in my reality. So I might not be able to tell you what that is. But I know from my 43 experience on th this planet, that new things are always coming in. New things are always being expanded into invented, manifested. Resources are always available and they're always expanding. We know this from quantum physics that the literal known and unknown universe is always continuously expanding. There's more generation every single moment. There's more coming in. So there are an infinite number of ways. You just have to choose one and decide what it's going to be. Your decision locks it in for that moment. Of course, you can change it later. But right now, you have to decide and choose a way that feels the most expansive. It feels the most fun. That doesn't mean you're not scared to do it. That doesn't mean courage isn't required on your part. Abundance requires more courage than suffering. Let me tell you that. Okay, learn, learn that abundance, being happy, being joyful, being in love requires more courage than suffering because suffering has become our default state. It's, it's what we know. It's normal for us as a species. So anything new will require courage. Okay. Oh, I love that. Kristen said, I asked God to point me in the right direction like a video game character. Yes, that that is full potential manifestation. How to best start talking with your partner about metaphysics and spirituality. So make it super relatable and add it into everyday conversation. So I like I brought in meta updated, you guys know that's the term we use in my family and my work. I meta updated my husband by telling stories by just like instead of calling it spirituality or metaphysics we do now but i'm saying when we first like started introducing that stuff into our marriage i didn't you know he's a man a masculine energy man he thinks more in the world of logic and rationality right my husband's a math guy is a physics guy engineer super like left brain right like so I, I didn't go to him and be like all woo woo in his face, but I would tell stories and incorporate things, right? And then like, for example, if I read something in a book and I would say, oh, I read this concept, what do you think about this? And then we would have a discussion about it. So introducing it in everyday life. I, I really want to do that video for you guys. Let me write that down because I feel like there are certain things the number five is coming to my mind, but maybe it's more than that. There's like five or six things that if you can slowly, gracefully introduce these concepts to people that you interact with often, whether it's coworkers, family members, your partner, your children, friends, slowly introduce them and make it a part of your regular everyday jargon, not in a preachy way, not in a, I know something I'm up here and you're down here way, just like, 
hey, um, you know, look at look at this story or look at this thing, this and this concept. I feel like it will really truly enhance relationships. Maybe that will be tomorrow's. So tomorrow's Thursday. You know how I've been doing a video every Monday and Thursday, a recorded video at eight a.m. Tomorrow, I'm really feeling like doing a live, so I might make that tomorrow's live. Let me know if that would be of interest to you guys, because I think that if you can introduce this to people that you interact with often, it's really going to enhance your relationship. I know this because I've helped my students and clients do this. And even in our in-person intensives, a lot of people say that the biggest value that they receive from our in-person events is the fact that they meet other people there that speak their language. They understand container issues. They understand couple bubble. They understand divine union. They understand inner work, shadow work, all limiting beliefs, all of these things, right? Uh, yes, do a live. I need to hear this. Okay. Yes, yes, please. Yes, that would be great. Yes, please. Okay. Awesome, Misha. Uh, Erica, Paula, Christian. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be there if you do a live. Awesome, Diane. Hi, babe. How are you doing? Yes. Okay. I'm so glad there's interest. Um, I'm also, I want to teach you how to do it tactfully. There is a way to share information that repels people. I used to be a self-aware Barbie and I used to share it in that way. I, I cringe thinking about it because I'm embarrassed that I used to do that. Like it's super embarrassing that I was like trying to stuff it down people's throat. And I know that I was definitely in my repelling energy and not my magnetism era. There is a way to do it gently, softly, lovingly, fun, funningly in a fun way that makes it attractive where people are like, oh, that's interesting. Tell me more. Or where can I read more about this? Or whatever, right? It's in a way that's an invitation, not kind of this chasing, I'm stuffing something down your throat kind of energy. We've all been there. We've done it and it's been done to us as well. Yes, please. I'm doing your Million Dollar Babe course right now. This is exactly what I need. Awesome. Yes, that's a powerful spiritual course. So, so, so happy for you. Did I ever throw in the link for Kainat? I have no idea. Ladies, we also have some spots left for Budapest. I'm super excited. That's our next in-person event. It's called Berkat in Budapest. I'll throw that in for you too. How else can I support you? Any other questions? I need to keep time. Okay, I'm good. I'm good with time right now. I have an event that I have to go to. And I need to... I. Was supposed to wash my hair yesterday i didn't i washed it today i don't like my hair the first day i wash it so i'm gonna have to throw in some curls in it or something for this event and glam up mina i'm going to your intensive in budapest do you recommend traveling with a husband sure yes whatever feels good to you right if if you want to turn this into a, uh, a couple's trip or a family trip, yes, that would be wonderful. Uh, or if you're like, um, I, we know at a lot of our events, people bring their partners, children, we've even had people bring their children, and then they'll be in the hotel room, um, you know, or they'll do another activity that day. And then, you know, my students will come to the intensive, and then they'll sync up later. At one of our events, this was the... Um, I think it was 2019 Fort Lauderdale event. Uh, Irfan was co-teaching. I want to do another one with Irfan. That was really fun. I don't know why we haven't done another one like that, but it was so fun. So Irfan, I taught the first day by myself. And then the second day, Irfan, I don't remember if it was the full day or the second day he did a half a day. But anyways, there were like four or five people there that had come with their husbands and their husbands were upstairs in the hotel room. And so when they found out that Irfan was going to also join me, they were like, well, if Irfan's teaching, would it be okay if we went upstairs and brought our husbands down? And I was like, yes, do it. Go get him. So they brought down their husband. And we, we have pictures of their husbands there. And it was so good. And Irfan, um, you know, taught for a little bit. And then we opened up the floor to Q&A like we always do. And the husbands ask questions and I loved it. It was so fun to see these men there supporting their wives and asking questions and being interested in the content and asking for support. I wanted to just cry thinking about it. And I need to do another one 
maybe the one after Budapest, um, it's coming into the field. Do another one where Irfan co-teaches it. And that way we can open it up to partners as well. That'd be a lot of fun. So, yeah. Um, you, so, you know, he can, you can make it a couple's trip and he can do kind of a solo activity that day. You can come to the intensive and then you can sync up and, and share with him the things that you learned. I love that. Mina, in which course you talk more about DNA epigenetics? I had an aha moment from one of your videos, but I lost it and can't seem to find it. It's in many of my courses. Um, Alchemy and Ascension has talk about our DNA, our history, especially why self-aware Barbies act the way they do and how we can kind of normalize that, laugh it off, uh, be a little bit above it. Gut level emotional response repaired has uh, DNA epigenetics stuff. I think a lot of my courses do actually because you can't remove it from who I am uh, because it's such a big part of my work. Um, but if you have specifics that you want to know, email my team at support at the .com, And if you can give them more identifying features of what you were learning, they can help you pinpoint exactly what course it was in. I have so much content I forget sometimes. That sounds divine, Nina said. Does Irfan consider himself a life coach as well? I don't know if he would consider himself that, but I even before I started doing what I do, I noticed that Irfan's family and friend group, even in our neighbors now, like whether they're older or younger, somehow Irfan ends up becoming a mentor to people. Like in his family, even his older uncles, his co younger cousins, um, in our neighborhood, this is happening now, in his friends group. I see people calling him all the time and running things by him, asking for his advice. He does the same thing too. He's got people, um, you know, we're blessed too. We have people in our life that we do that too. We're like, hey, I was thinking of doing this. Um, I know you've done this before. Like, do you have any advice for me? But a lot of people call him like every day, like his uncles, his cousins, my family. Um, and so he definitely has that like masculine alpha male kind of mentoring energy. I know I, I couldn't have done what I've built without him at all. Like I was just talking about this in Orange County with some of our family members because they were wanting to know a little bit more about what I do and how we run things. And I was like, that's my rock. That's my support system. Like he's a major part of my team, my spiritual team. And just, yeah. So I think he doesn't necessarily see it as a life coaching thing, but he has that energy about him, that like fatherly kind of uh, elder mentorship energy for sure. Let me see. Uh, yes, Mina, I have been struggling with how to speak to my husband without being preaching. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, my biggest advice, I'll, I'll do that video tomorrow for you guys. I've written that down. Think of a fun t uh, title for it too for me. But here's the number one thing that has helped me, whether it's with students, whether it's with my husband, whether it's with my children, or even family members and friends, storytelling. I think it's so evolutionary. It's so grounded of how we evolved as a species. Uh, we, you know, there's so many amazing science of showing how, why Homo sapiens became the dominant species and why some of the other ones that were similar to us back in the day died off. And the number one thing is storytelling. They say that we were able to tell stories and band people together. So storytelling, right? Um, there was one that we were just talking the other day. Let me see if I can remember. That would help you. But you know, I've shared a lot of those in my private courses um, where I've like used storytelling to meta update my husband about something or my children. They're, they're in there. I know you've heard them. I'm trying to think there was one that recently happened and I was saying it to my husband. He was like, wow, that's a limiting belief. She has a limiting belief. I'm like, yes. So... I want my husband and my children to always be aware that human beings have limiting beliefs and no one's above it. No one's above it. Because if they're aware of that, then they're also looking at their own limiting beliefs. And they're, right, I'm not being preaching, I'm just telling a story. 
Yes, I remember this from your book talking about the levels of self-aware Barbie. Yes, my 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 embarrassment era, where I was like trying to convince everyone of everything I was learning, and they were like, "Oh no, you're not embodied. Get away from me." <laughs> that that era. Alexandra said, "My husband is super curious about what I'm learning, but when I share a bit, he looks at me like I'm too woo woo." I think I don't know how to connect him to these topics. Okay, come to tomorrow's live stream. If you're on my email list, I usually like uh, schedule the live stream and the, these master classes, and then I'll email it out. So um, make sure you're on my email list, and that link is in the description box always. But I'll throw it in the chat for you guys as well. That way you know. Okay, Mina's gonna go live at this time. The replay, play, of course, will also be available, and. Remember that the way you receive information as a feminine identified woman or man, we have men that follow us that are more feminine identified, is not how the masculine receives information. So there is a tact, there is a grace to how you want to say things for sure. If you try to say it the way I can freely share it to you because you and I speak the same language. You and I resonate together. How do I know this? You found my work, and you like my work. You resonate with my work. We're soul family. We speak the same verbiage, the same frequency, the same resonance. Well, your husband might not speak the way I speak to you guys, right? Like if you go to your husband and talk about my guides and spirituality and chakras, that's not the way that he metabolizes and digests information. So you, as his wife, need to know how he is. You need to be curious about his makeup and how he metabolizes stuff, and share it with him. Okay, like I joke about this, and I say this with the most love. But my husband metabolizes information when it's his idea. So a lot of times, I have to tell a little story or say something in a certain way, back off from it. And two days later, three days later, he might be like saying the same thing back to me, but like saying it like it's his idea. Like in the past, the self-aware Barbie mean I used I used to get triggered by that. I talked about that in uh, the Orange County intensive. I used to get massively triggered by that, and I would get upset, and I would be like, "Oh, he's stealing my ideas, or he's ignoring me." When I said that, he ignored me, or he said no, and now he's claiming it's his idea. Then. As I got to know my husband more and his intention and his heart, and I started doing inner work, I'm like, first of all, it doesn't matter whose idea it was, as long as I got what I wanted, right? And secondly, I know that he's not a malicious person. Like Irfan is not like that. He doesn't have one like bone in his body that's malicious or or like that, you know. So I'm like, oh, he needs to make his ideas the ideas his own. He needs to he needs time to process. He might not. Agree with what I'm saying right that moment. He might need time to metabolize it, digest it, and three days later he might show up and say, "Oh, I was thinking about this." I'm like, "Oh, I wonder who planted that in your consciousness." But I'm just like, "Great idea! Yes, I would love it. Let's do it." It doesn't matter whose idea it was. He needed time to make it his own. Oh my God, you really get it! Ah, yay! I'm so glad. Um, Mina, have you heard of Navel Goddard's manifestation technique called the ladder technique, where you repeat what you want using "not" and "I don't want" in order to release obsessive wanting? So I have had people、uh, mention Navel Goddard. It's just even some of the teachers that I followed; they have followed Navel Goddard's teachings. I've tried over the years, and for some reason, maybe I wasn't in the right frequency. Maybe I wasn't at his level.、Um, I've tried to get into it. But I, it, it didn't resonate with me. Not that I'm against it. It didn't. I didn't understand it. I didn't have the consciousness IQ level to understand what he was saying. So I haven't studied him. I tried. I have all his books. I have a, all the audio books, all the physical books. Recently, recently, I would say in the past week, there are some concepts that are now starting to make sense. I'm like, oh. That's what he was talking about. I didn't get it at that time, but it's like starting to seek in. Now I've been able to manifest perfectly well without his teachings, 
but I feel like my next level, I'm at that level where I can kind of understand. This is what I wanted to say, and this is important. So thank you for saying that. Okay. I had every intention of discussing this, and then I forgot. I got sidetracked. The whole point of any manifestation technique, whether it's mine or Neville Goddard's or Abraham Hicks or Joe Dispenza or what else, uh, Rhonda Bynes or Bob Proctor or um, Joe Vitale, anyone. The whole point is to get you in a state of faith and get you in a state where you are open to receiving in any and all ways. Some techniques will work for you and some won't. There are techniques that people swear by, swear by. They will bet their entire life on that technique that I can't do to save my life. Because those exact techniques that work for them also do, not elicit, um, do not elicit faith from me. It elicits doubt. So I have tried very many different manifestation techniques. And for some reason, some make me second guess myself. Some make me doubt myself. Some create duplicity. While others, I'm like, yes, I can do this. I believe. I have no duplicity. I have 100% faith. So the best manifestation techniques for you will be ones that elicit the most faith, the most knowing, the most believing from your part. There might be something that I share with you. Like, for example, let's say journaling. Okay, journaling I love. You guys know journaling has been a part of my manifestation, my inner work for ages. I've been talking about it. I've been giving you guys journal prompts. I've been raving about it in my courses. You guys know that. Well, there might be someone out there that tries that consistently, maybe for three months, six months, and they're like, no, Mina, every time I do journaling, I actually get into an energy of doubt. Okay, well, you know what I'm going to say? You've tried that technique. Don't do that one. What is the one technique that you know instantly puts you in faith, instantly gets all of your energetic resources behind you? It eliminates all doubt. It eliminates all duplicity. Do that. Even if you don't see me doing it, maybe I haven't discovered that yet. Or maybe that particular technique that works for you, for some reason, because of my unique stories, my background, my conditioning, that might that same thing that works for you might elicit doubt from me. So years ago, Navel Goddard has a cult following. We know that. He is he's amazing. Years ago, when you guys started telling me about it, and I, I went and I bought all his books and I started studying it, it confused the hell out of me. Maybe I wasn't smart enough to get it, but I, I started studying it and I was just like, now I'm confused. Uh, I don't get it. I can't manifest all of a sudden. And then I'm like, hold on, hold on. I was manifesting just fine before I discovered this work. Maybe that work isn't for me. His techniques maybe aren't for me. Now, sometimes you guys, I'll say something. You're like, oh, that's Neville Goddard's technique. Maybe the way I'm doing it is his technique, but I don't understand it the way he was teaching it. Like, I, I'm sure a lot of what I teach has been influenced by him because I follow Joe Vitale, who claims that Deville Goddard changed his life. Joe Vitale's work has bits and pieces from Neville Goddard. So I have secondhand smoking kind of relationship with him. But that does, does that mean Neville Goddard is wrong? No, I might not just be at his level yet. So now for the past week, something in my heart is like, revisit that thing. I'm like, no, I didn't get it. Revisit it. You'll get it now. I'm like, okay. Like I just found out about this one thing and I was super excited about it. And I told my team member and he's like, oh, that's never God. I was like, oh, I didn't know that was from him. It's called the, the bridge of incidents. I'm like, oh, I didn't know that was his, but it's happened in my life. I heard someone talking about it. I'm like, that's happened to me where I desire something and then this happens, and then this happens, and then this happens, and then this happens. And I don't know that I'm on this path to manifesting, and then it manifests. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. So the point of every single manifestation technique is to get you aligned with God, 
is to get you in faith, is to get you in the energy so you can start downloading your next steps. Am I good with time? I need to just make sure I don't miss, I, I need time to curl my hair, get dressed and go to this event. Oh, I'm so sorry. Did I freeze? Some of you guys are saying I froze. Uh, Uzma said that happens to me with most of your courses. I don't get it. And after six months, wow, that's mind blowing. Sometimes we need to be like kind of digesting the frequency for a bit. That's happened to me. Even you guys know, I've been obsessed with the secret DVD for like 17 years, right? Even to this day, when I watch it, you would think by now I have it memorized, but that's not true. It's what's really freaky about that DVD is even to this day, when I watch it, I hear things that I didn't hear the first gazillion times, or I've heard something a million times, but I receive it in a new way. Like when I'm watching it, I'm like, oh, and now I've been watching it in my gym. You guys know when I work out. And so sometimes Irfan or one of the kids are passing through like, did you say something? I'm like, no, no, no. I'm just talking to my TV screen. And I'm just like, oh my God, or wow. But it's, it's kind of funny because I've literally watched it hundreds of times. Sometimes I'll even hear a teacher in there. I'm like, that person was not there before. I've never noticed them before, but I'm noticing them now because now my frequency is different and I will take from it exactly what I need today. Before when I was watching it, I received from it exactly what I needed then. Okay. Same thing happened to me in 2018. I was in a Facebook group and someone was basically defaming and bad mouthing Abraham Hicks. I had never heard of Abraham Hicks. I had never heard of Esther Hicks. And they were going on and on talking so much crap about and I was like, interesting, who is this person that is eliciting so much triggering and hate from these people. So I googled Abraham Hicks. And I was like, Oh, my God, right. So I started listening. And um, some things resonated, some things just went over my head, I didn't get it. And, but I, I kept like going back and listening. This was in 2018. And then I had the opportunity to go and visit uh, in person. There was an event happening in, was it in Austin or Dallas? There was an event, I think it was in Dallas. And it, that was three hours away from us at the time. So we're like, okay, let's go. So I went and when I was there, it hit me. I got a huge download. I was trying to learn the law of attraction from Abraham Hicks, but I already knew the law of attraction. I had already been following it for like, you know, I think 12 years up until that point. I didn't need that. What the reason that that was placed in my field was so that I can learn to channel. And that was mind blowing. I'm like, Oh, I've been focused on the wrong thing. I don't need to learn the law of attraction. I know the law of attraction. God placed Abraham Hicks in my field so I can learn to channel. And that's when I got really great at channeling from watching her. It wasn't necessarily what she was saying. It was how she was channeling. So sometimes it takes time for us to realize why we need to listen to someone. For some reason, all of a sudden, God's been loosening the jar on Neville Goddard for me. So you might hear me saying in three months or six months or two weeks, Oh my God, I finally get Neville Goddard. But right now I'm at that place where it's, it's like, kind of getting it kind of not getting it like I'm opening up to that frequency if that makes sense. Uh, Joe Vitali, he's one of the teachers from the secret movie, I'm gonna try to pronounce it. You're not going to believe this, but so Joe, Dr. Joe Vitale used to live in Houston decades ago. And his, one of his closest friends is my chiropractor. And I, I was just so, so shocked to learn this. So I went to my, you guys remember that story I had posted on Instagram. I went to, uh, you know, Irfan found this chiropractor for us a couple of years, well, about a year ago, I think it's after we moved into this house. And, um, uh, I noticed that this chiropractor was very kind of like metaphysical and stuff. And then this chiropractor was a very like known published author. And so I bought one of his books and then he told me he had another book and I was like, Oh, I would love to purchase your other book as well. That other book was co-authored by Dr. Joe Vitelli. 
And I was like, oh my God, this guy, you know him? He's from The Secret. And he's like, that's one of my closest friends. We, you know, used to be, you know, I, I don't know if they went to school together or something, but they, when he was in Houston, I'm like, oh my God, what a small world. And I feel like I was like, supposed to reconnect with Dr. Yo Vitali through my chiropractor. So it was so interesting. But yeah, he's one of the, he's the one in the secret DVD wearing the black beads. You guys remember? The, the guy with the black beads. I watch The Secret a few times every year. Like I will reread a book or rewatch Secret and the city episodes and movies. What's the city? And now I'm, what is the city, girl? Tell me more. So, um, so yeah, I was like that with The Secret. I have certain books too that are on my reread every year. And I've put a couple of those books on Armand and Ayan, my sons, reread every year. Luckily, they like those books. So there's no resistance. They enjoy it. But I have a couple books. So yeah, sometimes, not sometimes, every single time when you rewatch something, you reread something, you revisit something, you're not the same person revisiting it. Because you have now changed in consciousness. You have activated new neural pathways. You have activated new levels of knowing things, seeing things, hearing things. So when you rewatch something, you, when you revisit something, it's not you revisiting it. It's the new you revisiting it. And you will take from it completely something different. Oh, sex in the city. Oh, okay, okay, I got you. Okay, I was like, is that a book? Is that a treating? Did I miss it? Okay. I revisited Pulse at the Basic Babe Bundle first exercise after the OC event, and this time I went on a way deeper, which made me aware of this new level of inner work I feel is going to be a big shift and open me up so much. I feel like we almost can't even say revisiting because you have been consistently doing inner work. You've been growing. You've been expanding. You have new neural pathways. You have no new paradigms. You have no new ways of hearing and seeing things. So now when you went and you did it, there is a new and more up-level version of you that extracting new information from that same course. So I feel like even when we say revisiting, it, it's like visiting through a new lens. I'm the same way. I, I will watch a movie and be like, what? That never happened before. Or, oh my God, that's what they meant. And I'm acting like, and I have this habit of saying it out loud and my family has gotten used to it, luckily. But I could, that's why I don't watch a lot of movies at the movie theater because I would be like, whoa, or yay, or oh my God. And people would probably not like that. <laughs> I watched The Secret 2 and the first seminar I ever attended was Mike Julie. Oh, I didn't know he had seminars. I was in awe of his storytelling and transmission. He's the one that authored that book that I was telling you guys about at the last um, live session, um, Conversations with the Universe, I think it was, or something like that. I found that I purchased books and courses sometimes years before I actually noticed needed them. When I need it, I've seen, I've already got the resource. Kristen, that happens to me all the time. In fact, a couple weeks ago, I heard about this book. I, I can't recall the name right now, but I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. So I go on to Amazon and it says, you purchased this book in 2028. And I'm like, wait, what? So I go on my Kindle and there it is, but I never read it. And, and so I'm like, that's, it's almost creepy and eerie, right? The past version of me, it's like prepared and bought that book already. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess I should read that book now. Okay, past self, you, you got me covered. But yes, this has happened to me a lot. It is just beautiful and scary and eerie and just awe-inspiring that God just has us covered. Like all parts of us, it's just the same part in different locations of time space. Yeah, it says, you know how Amazon says that? I'm like, oh, uh, 2008? Yes, the complete notes from the universe. Ladies, I'm gonna, I, I'm loving this conversation. I feel like I don't even want this to end, but I have to go because, like I said, I need to do my hair, finish getting dressed for my event. I love you guys so much. This was so much fun. Um, I watched Jack Canfield's YouTube live yesterday. Oh, I didn't know he had a YouTube channel. I've seen him live. He came to Houston and I attended one of his um, in-person intensives. Everyone follow, follow all the folks from The Secret. I agree. I agree. 
He was the chicken soup. Yep. I went to his event. 2019, I think it was. Yeah, it was good. He came to Houston and it was a lot of fun. So yes, love you guys. Uh, I mean, I just want to say the meditation that you did a couple of lives ago was mind blowing. The one where you saw the pink and gold. I saw the same thing and was in awe as I was following along. Amazing. I love that collective manifestation energy. Thank you so much, ladies. I will be back tomorrow. Um, I have a podcast interview and a meeting with Tinkific, but it's somewhere between that. I'm going to show up live tomorrow and we'll talk about certain things that I believe you should be gracefully and tactfully introducing to friends and family so that um, they can be on the same wavelength as you. Oh my God, yes, she caught the Holy Spirit. Thank you, thank you. Love you guys. Um, Kainat, 48 hours before the pre-order price goes away. Love you. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. YouTube did this really weird thing where they move the end button when you end live stream to the other side where the camera is. And now when I'm ending it, it's like I'm showing up with my hands. Why couldn't they have left it here? Like, why, why fix a good thing? Anyways, sorry. Bye. <laughs> Love you.